Okay, so we've talked a little bit about observables. Now let's talk about the observable life cycle. And also we're going to be building our very own observable. Something which you never do in real life. You never actually build your own observables, but in order to really understand how they're working and to understand a lot of these operators, it is absolutely crucial that you understand what observables are doing underneath the hood. And this is so foundational that if you drill this part down very well, you will understand observables a lot clearer and a lot more easily. So if there's any video that I would not skip in this whole entire course, it would probably be this one. So observable life cycles go like this. Whenever you want to use an observable, you use a subscribe operator. Very similar to a YouTuber to a viewer relationship. If you want to see my videos, you must subscribe to them. But in an actual observable, like the part that you don't usually see, you've got these parts right here. You've got next, you've got complete, you've got error. So next is what I would describe as just kind of the way that it sounds. It means that this has actually executed. Here's the data. Here is what you want to go to next. Why is it next? Because unlike promises, so we talk about, prom you may be familiar with promises. Promises resolve one value and it's over. It's not a stream in actual RxJS, remember that we're operating with streams of data. So in order for us to continue to go down the stream, what we need to do is we need to call next. So a better, even a better way to describe it is, is that next is going to help you go to the next part of the stream. So what is complete? Complete essentially means that you have gotten to the end of the stream it's time for you to get out of the stream and go somewhere else. <laughs> it's kind of like the song, um, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here type thing. Like we're not going to shut down and we're, you know, we're not going to totally destroy the observable, but you can't, you know, this, this is complete. You need to move on. Error just means like, you know, I don't know what's going on and I think that this is broken and I don't. I think you don't know what you're talking about. That's basically what error means. Error is essentially a fancy word for, you know, question mark. I don't know what's going on. So now that you, and it kind of makes sense too, you want to go to the next part in the stream, but maybe you don't want to get off, but maybe the stream is complete. Maybe the stream of data is complete. Maybe you don't know what's going on. Hence, we ha that's why we have the error. But here's where things get a little bit peculiar. So you've completed, why do we need an unsubscribe? And this has to do with a lot of things, but you need to just really realize that observables can execute on almost anything. And if you want to use an observable, the thing of which you wrapped around the observable. So if you had an observable, you could in theory turn an array into an observable, any type of crazy, you know, HTTP response, HTTP uh, data, you can turn objects into observables. And some of these things may be still be executing and emitting data. What if you had like an observable on satellite data? I'm sure that there's somewhere out there satellite data is, you know, an observable. You need to unsubscribe even though this data stream could still be complete. And what unsubscribe does is unsubscribe literally just deletes the stream. Like it just says to hell with everything, we're just gonna delete everything, goodbye. Like this is no longer in memory. It's like there's no stream even to actually work on. Okay, so how would we model a YouTuber um, subscriber relationship? And this is how you would basically, if, if I were to wrap the video data that I could send to you guys in an observable, this is sort of the way that it would look like. This would be the YouTuber 
This is the person that's sending next. Next means you're sending data. You're pushing data downstream to the observer. And this is what an observer would look like. Now, this is kind of strange and this is kind of unconventional, but how do you actually hit like the subscribe button? Like how does the user or the actual person who's watching the videos, you know, quote unquote subscribe? So what, sh what would happen is you would do, you would take your observable and you would subscribe to it. And if the relationship that we have right now is, you know, what we're going to kind of go with, we would have this and we would take this and we would put observer in here. So we would go observer and we put our observer in there and then that's how you would receive your values. But you typically don't see that. And what you normally see is you see this, you see an arrow function and you see console log. And that is representative of the next. That is like the actual next that you see in our life cycle or our observable life cycle. And if you want to complete the data, you would put subscriber, it's the same thing. You would put subscriber and you would add subscriber.complete right here. So if you want to complete the river and you want the river to shut off, you would call subscriber.complete. And if something errors or something is not occurring the way that you want it to, you would call uh, subscriber.error. And that's pretty much in a nutshell, the observable lifecycle. Now let's go ahead and let's actually build an observable of our own. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building an observable of our own. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to go in here. We're going to go import and we're going to go in and bring in our observable. And I'm in TypeScript, but you can use whichever one that you want to. It doesn't really matter. You can use regular JavaScript. So first thing is I'm going to have a little bit of programming convention right here. Usually when you have an observable, it has a dollar sign at the end of it. Not always though, but typically that's what you see. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to actually create, if you want to create your own observable, you just new it up. It's essentially a class. And we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go subscriber. Then here, and that will make, so that is good to go. What we want to do is we're going to have our subscriber dot next. And you may be wondering, well, Teddy, we don't have any data. What do we do about that? And you would be correct. We actually need to create our own observer. So we're going to go in here and we're going to have this. We're going to make an object, which is going to have a next. And then it's going to have a value. And I'm just going to have an any right here. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. You can put anything. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to have a function within this object and I'm going to actually log the value. And what you would do if you want to actually use this, you would have observable. So I'm gonna have the observable with the dollar sign and then I'm going to have subscribe. And if you look, we've got our IntelliSense. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and pass in my observer, just like that. And that will allow us to actually log these values. But I actually need to pass something to my next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a good old fashioned hello world. This will go down into the next and this will actually console log the value. So here, if I want to actually run it, I'm just gonna go ahead in here, gonna go debug. I like to debug things to see what's actually going on. And we're gonna go ahead and see if it will console log value this. And if you look down in here, we've got a hello world for our very first uh, observable that we've actually made. But we can't just stop there. We need to move on to our other lifecycle methods. So if if I want to add more lifecycle methods to this observable, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go complete. And this is what's going to actually, quote unquote, shut off the river. So if I want to have the complete, I would pass in the same exact observable right here. So I'll go complete. And I'll go here, gonna make it another function contained within, within an, contained with, within an object. So go up here, then I'm going to go console.log and we're gonna say just completed. 
And then we can also have an error up here. So if I also want to have an error, I can do the exact same thing. So if I want to have error, go in here and have just good old fashioned error within my object. And we can call this whatever we want. I'm going to just call it ERR. And we're going to have an error function go in here, console. And we're going to console log this and say, this is broken <laughs> just like that and let's go ahead pass all of this in here run all of these uh the subscriber complete subscriber.error and see if this thing's working and with that we'll have completed all of our actual lifecycle methods hello world complete and we don't have any actual errors in there and you may be wondering, well, what happened? Like, why did error not actually show? And error does not show because once complete is ran, there will be no other data that can be sent to you. So if you want error to run, what you have to do is you have to have error before the complete. And that is going to um, show you exactly how the error complete actually works. So if you want error to complete, just switch out those and you'll see this is broken. This actually completes. Once it once it completes, like it's completed, it's not going to say anything else and you won't receive any other console logs to the actual console. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. That is a good introduction to how observables work underneath the hood. If you like this, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.